Let's say you're thinking about kicking off a pilot for your company using generative AI, and let's say that your focus is language models to generate text like answers or advice or summaries. And you want to know which platform would be best for a pilot for that. Also, let's say that you're looking at the big three. That's Microsoft, Amazon, or Google. If we say Microsoft, we probably mean Microsoft Azure OpenAI service. That's the service that lets you access and customize OpenAI generative language models. If we say Amazon, we probably mean Amazon SageMaker. That's where you can build and train generative models using the Amazon tools and infrastructure like Lambda and S3. Or you could use open source options like GPT Neo X or Transformer XL. And if we say Google, we probably either mean the low code, no code solution called Gemini or AI platform natural language, which requires more expertise. Or we might mean Vertex AI auto ML natural language for even more flexibility. So that's the landscape that we're talking about. Okay, of these, which one would be the best for your pilot? Well, let's start with that standard nothing burger answer. It's challenging to definitively say that any one platform is significantly superior. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Also, your needs may vary. Okay, perfect. So now we've checked that box by saying that, but you probably noticed that in doing so, I didn't actually tell you anything particularly useful. And while we're at it, let's check another box by asking a perfectly legitimate question. On what criteria should these three options be compared? And the standard answer is that they should be compared based on at least five criteria. One, capabilities and features. Two, integration and compatibility. Three, security and compliance. Four, technical expertise required. And five, cost, which by the way, includes price and also other features like serverless architecture, for example, or scale to zero, things that can help to reduce the cost by not wasting resources. Now, let's remember that we're talking about a pilot at this point, not a full implementation. And in the course of doing the pilot, we'll probably uncover various important details that might be specific to our particular environment or to the structure and nature of our data or important details about our use case as the full scope gets better defined through the MVP and pilot stage. And some of these things we won't necessarily know in as much detail beforehand compared to our better understanding after the pilot is done. So in other words, before the pilot, our understanding of the critical success factors is more high level than it will be later on. So can we use that high level understanding to make our decision? For insight on that, let's look at a short blog here on LinkedIn written by a solutions architect. You can see as you scroll through his article that he's comparing Microsoft Azure ML versus Amazon SageMaker versus Google Vertex AI. And he's doing that on 14 criteria that nest underneath the five pillars I mentioned just now. But mostly, he's giving the same answer for all three for each criteria, sometimes in exactly the same words. For example, all three of them offer a comprehensive suite of solutions and services. All three of them have very robust security and compliance features. All three of them have an auto ML platform that can be used to tune and train and deploy models, which would reduce your development time. 
All three of them require technical knowledge in order to customize the model and definitely in order to deploy it securely in your enterprise setting. And at the bottom here, you can see that Garrett Mitchell Jones from PwC in the UK writes, at the level analyzed, you could have literally written all major non-Asia centric cloud vendors offer equivalent Gen AI ML capabilities. At the top level, the go-to-market offerings are analogous and commoditized. Yep. So in a nutshell, although we know what criteria we should compare on, mostly the big three are at parity on those, unless we dig down to a deeper level of detail, which we probably don't know enough about yet if we're still in the pilot stage. But there's one obvious difference, even at this level, and especially for a pilot, and that's integration and compatibility. Let's take a look at that one. Microsoft Azure OpenAI service integrates well with Azure tools and services. So that makes it attractive for existing users of Azure. Compatibility with non-Microsoft tools might be more limited. Amazon SageMaker integrates well with other Amazon services, making it attractive for companies that already use AWS for their cloud infrastructure. And the Google options I mentioned just now integrate well with other Google Cloud services like BigQuery and Cloud Storage, which would probably be relevant for existing users of Google Cloud. But integration with non-Google tools might require additional effort. I think you see the pattern. Our team did 15 large language model projects in 2023, including projects using Microsoft and projects using Amazon and projects using Google. And the single best predictor of the platform they chose for their pilot was simply the vendor they were currently using for their other infrastructure. Which makes sense, despite the standard caveat warnings about avoiding vendor lock-in. They picked their partner for a reason. Also, why complicate matters when it's only a pilot? Granted, your final use case might actually turn out to be somewhat better suited for one of the other big three, or even for a completely different option, not one of the big three at all. But since all the options we've been discussing today are more or less at parity, you probably want to at least give a chance to your trusted technology partner so you can see how it performs. And maybe you'll run more than one pilot. Maybe your primary partner plus a challenger. For example, let's say you use Amazon for infrastructure. Maybe you'll stand up a pilot using SageMaker and another one, a challenger on OpenAI or Vertex. Could be. And after that, you'll be better able to choose the best option based on what you learned. So, that's how it actually plays out in practice. I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you next time.